welcome here. Today I am going to be walking you guys through the process of making the Peppermint Patterns pocket skirt. I'm really excited to try this pattern. It's um, a free or cheap pattern on Peppermint Patterns website. I'll link it below. It is very awesome. I am quite excited to give it a try and see how it turns out and share it all with you guys along the way. Thanks for watching. So first thing you want to do is get your fabric laid out and you always want to try to line up your pattern pieces on top of your fabric along the proper grain lines to try to determine the best way to cut it to not waste any fabric and also just to make sure you have enough fabric to complete your project. As far as having to cut out the pattern pieces, the peppermint pattern pocket skirt pattern has only, I believe, four pieces and it's really easy to cut out. There's two pieces that will get cut on the fold, which is the center front and the center back. And then you'll have two pieces that you will just cut um, on a double layer. So that way you get two mirrored pieces for the lower and the upper skirt or side panel. After you have it all cut out, you will match the upper and lower side panel pieces together, right side together. After you have sewn both side panel pieces together, right side together, you will just open it up and iron it so that way the sewn edge is pointed towards the top of the skirt. That, that is where you're going to top stitch it down here in a minute. Top stitching is very useful, especially when you want to make sure that a certain seam pulls a certain way. So now, according to the pattern, our next step is to pull the bottom edge of the side panel up to the top edge of the side panel, making sure that we are at the fold line, and that creates our pocket. On the pattern pieces, there will be a fold line mark on, I believe it's the upper panel of the side panel. And you'll just want to create a little snip on your fabric at that spot so you know where to fold it. Next step is to baste down all the sides of the pocket so that way it stays together and you're easily able to sew it together with the center front and the center back pieces that you'll be attaching it to. You can see our pocket is coming together nicely. This is what the inside looks like. And this is the outside. This is your pocket. How cool is that? Next, you're gonna take the center front piece and attach right sides together and pin all the way down the side seam, following the called for seam allowance. Next step is to stitch it all together. Make sure you've changed back to your regular stitch length from your basting stitch length. And here is your center front attached to both of your side pocket panels. It's starting to look like a skirt. Next you'll be attaching your back center panel to the side panels which will create the completed circle and skirt. Once you're done sewing the center back panel into the two side panels, you're going to have what will actually resemble your skirt. 
And now at this point you haven't surged any of the edges. You'll do that in the next step. But here is where you should be at at this point. I can't help it. I just love these pockets. So now you want to turn it inside out again. And now you're going to surge all of the side seams. And then you'll press them flat. Next, you're going to construct the waistband. And the waistband on this pattern is actually really quite easy. It's just designed to be a fold down, which is probably one of the most easy ones to construct. So your first step is to iron down about a quarter of an inch. And then you're gonna do that all the way around. And then you will fold it down again, whatever the width is of your desired elastic. I did a inch and a quarter of elastic. So I folded down my second time an inch and a half to allow enough room in the channel for the elastic to pass through. This is definitely a tedious process to do all the way around, but it is really important to take your time and make sure that you're doing the same measurements all the way around. So that way you don't have any issues passing your elastic through the channel and you don't have to redo anything. So that's always my goal, not having to redo anything. After you've pinned it all in place, you're going to need to sew it down. You'll follow the inner edge and sew all the way around by the correct seam allowance. I find for myself personally that whenever I'm sewing a long straight line like this, whether it be a hem or a waistband, I am really tempted just to pedal to the metal with the sewing machine and rush and think that I can get it done at a good quality at a high speed. And sometimes it just doesn't work out that way and then I have to unpick it to make even lines and it's just worth it to go slow and take your time and just not rush the process because you'll wind up with a finished product that you're so much more happy with than if you'd rushed it and you've got uneven seams or edges and you know you've got a product that you're really happy with it's just worth it to go slow and make sure you're doing your best now I'm going to use my bodkin to attach to the end of my elastic and thread it all the way around the waistband panel. This will gather up the fabric and make it that really nice gathered skirt look and give you a really comfortable waistband. And once you reach the end, you want to give it a try and make sure that you don't have it too tight or too loose because this is your last chance to alter that. Once you're happy with the uh, fit of your skirt, you're going to take both ends of the elastic and you want to overlap them and pin it together and cut off the excess. Now you need to sew your elastic where you have it marked with a zigzag stitch, not forgetting to back tack it at the start and the end of the stitch to make sure it holds in place. Now you'll pin that opening that you threaded your elastic through and sew that channel shut. Now your waistband channel is officially closed. 
And your very last step is to hem it. This is always where I start getting really excited that the project is almost done and it's almost at the point where it's a finished garment. I did decide that I wanted to take a few inches off the end of my skirt here, make it more of a midi length. And to hem it, you just do basically the same thing you did for the waistband channel. You're gonna fold it up about a quarter to a half an inch, depending on your preference, how wide you want your hem to be. And then you're just going to fold it up again. I believe I did it by a half an inch the second time. And then just sew it down. And here it is. This is just the practice fabric. I don't believe I'll be wearing this skirt because it's mainly a polyester cotton blend and I just don't find polyester comfortable to wear. But I really am happy with how it turned out. It's a really nice pattern and I'm very happy to have this pattern in my collection and I plan to make it again and again. Thank you guys for joining me on this sewing day. We made the peppermint pattern pocket skirt and it is awesome. I made it in a test fabric out of an old shower curtain that I thrifted and I cannot wait to make it again in some, probably some awesome linen or stone wash cotton. I can't decide. But if you'd like to see more of my sewing adventures, just hit the subscribe button and I'll be Seeing you again next time. Thanks. Bye. I wanted to insert some additional footage here. After I completed the practice skirt, I couldn't resist cutting into some beautiful fabric and making it again. This gray skirt is a cotton linen blend and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I made it next in a 100% linen fabric and you can just tell that the drape is amazing i love it this pattern is not my favorite so i'm probably going to pass this skirt along but i'm definitely going to be making it again in more colors that are going to be able to live forever in my wardrobe i had a lot of fun making this pattern and i'm definitely going to link it below so that you guys can try it too thanks again for watching you guys Bye.